Hello, welcome to the second episode of In My Moment. Thank you guys for coming back to another episode, or if this is your first time, thanks for clicking. Thank you to the people, for real, for real, who left comments on the video or left a review, left a DM for me. Thank you so much because you don't even understand how much that means to me. Last episode, I kind of talked a lot about like being perceived and I, okay, like I feel like so many people resonated with that and that's crazy because I'm going to kind of go a lot more in depth about like the internet stuff, social media in this episode, but yeah, like the thing about being perceived and then like (laughs) just knowing that someone's going to see it, right? But you don't know if like someone is going to comment or like just say anything at all to you about it in real life or online. So it just feels crazy to like have feedback. So I think everybody that does that because seriously, like there was a point in time with my YouTube channel and honestly, no, actually this is like, this is still prevalent. But I remember when I first started, I got my my dad, my grandma, my mom, like these are the only people that were commenting on my stuff. You know what I mean? So like I appreciate everybody who honestly engages at all, like on Instagram, YouTube, everything. But I want to start out this episode and probably the next episodes with three things that I've been liking this week. The reason why I want to share this is because Things that make you happy literally give you drive in life. Like, it gives you a reason to live. And for me, the things... I'm so dramatic. I'm, like, so, so dramatic about the things that I like because when you when you listen, when you hear what I'm about to say, you'll understand why I'm dramatic. But we really need things to keep us going. So as I'm saying my three things, um, think about things for you that like just this week, just this week. So narrow it down to just this week that have been making you happy or giving you a reason to live. So mine is the first one is gingerbread lattes, period. I don't really have anything else to say besides that. Probably every week is lattes or like coffee in general that will always give me a reason to live and it's called addiction but whatever i started making well okay for one i've been getting a gingerbread latte every time i go to the cafe and it's so good gives me so much happiness and my mom made this gingerbread syrup at her house and she has like a really nice um espresso machine so whenever i go over there and i've been making lattes they just hit so hard with the gingerbread syrup but i just love gingerbread like everything (laughs) i talked about that on instagram but okay that's number one the second thing is holiday candles and specifically this gingerbread house candle honestly any holiday candle just gives me so much happiness and the last thing is christmas and that's kind of obvious when i'm like gingerbread gingerbread but christmas vibes have been giving me happiness like I needed it so much and I feel like Christmas always comes around the time where you just like need that feeling of joy (laughs) because it's coming to an end. You're like thinking about all the things that either you did or you didn't do and honestly it can get emotional. It can get like just sometimes it can be depressing like not gonna lie. Sometimes it's hard and sometimes when you have good years you're like oh my god. I've came so far and then Christmas like just tops it all off. I don't know if you guys celebrate Christmas like if you don't celebrate Christmas I feel like you still low-key do like you watch the Grinch like tell me you've seen the Grinch please. Anyways Christmas in general Christmas lights Christmas candles holiday drinks all the vibes of Christmas is giving me a reason to live. Okay so let's get into the real tea of this episode which is how to make money online, how to be an influencer, how to become like a content creator, do anything online. So I wrote everything down in my journal so that I can remember what to talk about and not get off track like the last episode. But that might be the first tip actually is get a journal. Specifically dedicate a journal to your journey if this is something you want to do. And I'm assuming this is something you want to do if you're watching this video. Get a journal and be really specific with your journey 
Um, don't let it overwhelm you though. Don't be like, oh my God, my journal has to be so organized and I have to whatever, whatever. Guys, my journal, I literally just write in any page and I write every, like, I'm not even like trying to make it look cute. I do use different colored pencils so that it does, or sorry, different col colored pens so that it's like a little bit appealing. But other than that, I'm not going to try to have good handwriting. I'm not going to try to be organized with it because that would just make me probably not even pick it up. Like if you've had a journal before and you just never end up picking it up, it's probably because you're overthinking it. And that's why I encourage you to get just like a plain one like this um, because just don't overthink it. Like that's going to hold you back, first of all, from even using your journal. I also want to start out by saying that I'm still at the beginning of my journey. I'm just giving you advice and perspective from what I've gone through in my journey. And I hope that it kind of helps you and inspires you. So the first thing I want to start out with is your mindset. Girl, you're a baddie. You're literally a baddie. You deserve everything. You deserve everything for real and believe that i know it sounds like if you're already having the thought of like oh that's stupid girl i'm sorry but you're gonna have to pick yourself up and understand and truly believe you deserve it you deserve everything you want and i really really hope that you believe that like truly because if you don't you're already a little bit behind. You're already, that's something you have, that's like the first step. Think about this. Think about if your favorite person didn't believe in themselves and they just either never showed up online or just never pursued their dreams so you never found out about them. Okay, so think about that. And realize that you have like the craziest potential. And I just want you to believe that. Believe it to be true because it is. I want to also say this too because it's a part of like the mindset thing. But if you're having like negative thoughts basically telling you like you're not good enough or you're not smart enough, you're not qualified, you're not anything enough. First of all, I want to say like I want to give you advice. But I also have these thoughts all the time. And... Honestly, right now, it's something that I'm working on just to, like, get my brain better. I'm, like, literally trying to get my brain back to health because, girl, I'm down bad sometimes. I guess the advice that I'm going to give you, I need to honestly listen to it for myself because I get the same way when it comes to, like, negative thoughts or limiting beliefs. Sometimes I want to throw my life away in the trash can and... I just want to quit everything. And that's like this weird part of my brain telling me, girl, you ain't worth it. You, who you think, who do you think you are? Like, you know what I mean? But I have to punch her in the face. I have to literally push that girl out. And I don't think you should do that. And this is where my advice is becoming therapy. I don't think you should do that. I think you should identify what is hurting you or holding you back, anything like that. And once you identify it, it's going to be a lot easier for you to let it go. And that's definitely something I have to work on too. But believing in yourself, shifting your mindset, and just stopping your negative thoughts from taking control of your action. Because once it takes control of your thoughts... You can, you have some control over your thoughts and you can, you can do something about it. But once it starts taking over what your action, like that, the things that you're doing, girl, seek help and you can do it internally. I believe in you. The last one is going to be a little bit psychology, I guess you could say, but, um, saying it out loud, saying it out loud, what you're doing. This was a problem I had and to this day probably still have a little bit, but in my very beginning stages of like doing YouTube or doing anything social media, I felt way too cringe to say it out loud. Like it just felt so uncomfy to be like, oh yeah, I make YouTube videos and I'm like, oh, it's just like, stop, 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 stop. I'm still like that. I'm still like that. 
I need to work on this and we'll work on it together. Like, okay, for me saying like, I'm a content creator, I'm a YouTube star. <laughs> like, let me just say I'm a YouTube star. Oh my gosh. I just realized, yes, literally what I'm telling you, when you say things out loud, you're giving it so much more power than when you just keep it in your mind. Manifesting goes like way further than writing it down. It's also saying it out loud. And then the biggest part is doing it, right? But like saying it out loud is a huge, huge first step. Like I'm going to start saying I'm a YouTube star. I'm a YouTube star. Oh my gosh. See, even that sounds cringe, but I'm just going to say I'm a YouTube star. Imagine yourself in your dream position, who you are, and start saying that is who you are. Start saying that is who you are because you're going to start to be in alignment with that person. Because look, if you're over here saying like, oh no, I don't like, I don't do any of that. I don't, whatever. That's not my thing. But you want to be over here doing that. That is not in alignment, girl. That is not in alignment. Start saying you are this, you're doing this and start doing it too. But start saying it. That's a huge tip. Okay. This is a very small tip, but stop overthinking. Overthinking is going to kill everything. It's going to literally just make you want to delete your channel. Stop uploading. Don't talk to anybody. But I noticed whenever I'm not overthinking and I'm constantly just doing, I'm getting so much more done. I'm actually doing the things I like always dreamt about. But when I spend so much time just thinking and planning and thinking and planning and planning, nothing's actually happening. So it's like, actually spend your energy on doing the things rather than overthinking it. Okay, so let's get into if you are just a complete beginner, you have no no social media and you want to start. Say you want to start a new account, which I do recommend. I honestly recommend starting from scratch. Like, I don't even have to explain this, but because I know every, like, nobody wants, like, people that they went to school with or whatever that they know in real life to see, like, any of your online stuff, but they're going to see it. You just have to celebrate. <laughs> just celebrate and be happy that, honestly, anybody's watching. <laughs> for real but don't let that hold you back for real but i do think that if you're scared of any of that like happening start a new account even if you're not scared i would start a new account from scratch just so you can identify exactly the people that want to follow you for your account and not just because like they know you you know what i mean because then it gets like weird i don't know i can't explain it but i hope you know what i mean so start a new account. I would recommend starting Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. I say all three. If you want to just pick one, ooh, I don't even know. I guess you would have to identify where you want to really start. For me, I said this in the last episode, but I started on YouTube literally. And like I had a personal account on Instagram, but I, and I, I actually did post on there. But like I said, it just felt more like a friend kind of thing. It wasn't like what I'm doing now. So when I was on YouTube, it felt like I was just starting from scratch and I did. So I would recommend whatever you think that whatever platform you see yourself, because to be honest, I have to identify that like for myself too. like I see myself for the long run on all the platforms, honestly. But YouTube, for sure, that's why I'm putting, like, time into it. And even TikTok. I hope TikTok never goes away. I love TikTok. But I also feel like each platform means something different. Um, so I really, I would really, really suggest for you to have all three. Let me be honest. On my TikTok, I literally, I make TikToks. And then I post them to YouTube Shorts and I post them to Instagram. And I don't really make separate videos besides YouTube or like stories on my Instagram. So it's not as hard as you think it is. If you just dedicate yourself to one platform, you can honestly like go throughout the other ones and just like repost and stuff. And you will probably grow like that because that's kind of what happened to me. 
So I would say start all three platforms for sure. Okay, another tip is to figure out who you are and what you want to like represent. And here's an easy way for you to do this because if you're an overthinker like me, you can, you're probably like already spiraling like, oh my God, who am I? But here's an easy way you can do this. So this is what I did whenever I first started out my Instagram and I was like, I want to grow. I wrote down my Instagram name in a bubble, like in the center. <laughs> and I just put all these words that I felt like identified with just the vibe or aesthetic of like my account and the way that it makes people feel, which I remember asking on my Instagram story actually like, what do you guys or how do how does my account make you guys feel and i post that every now and then just to like get a refresher and make sure i'm kind of on like the path that i want to be um so ask your if you're starting from zero you probably don't have anybody to ask so ask yourself maybe ask your friend um or the people who are telling you like that you should do the social media them what you know they think of when they think of you and also try to think of about that for yourself. Um, but that will kind of help you identify the kind of vibes you're going for. I would even make a Pinterest board for this and like put together the vibes that you're going for and how it makes you feel. If you're still confused and you don't really know how to describe what you're going for, just think about your higher self. Imagine yourself in your dream position, like I said again. and. Describe how that makes you feel. Um, another thing you should ask yourself is what kind of value, I guess you could say, you're going to bring to the platform. So for me, let me just give an example, a personal example. I just want to inspire people. I want people to like come to my account as a place of comfort, like straight up comfort. Because I remember before I started any of my like any social media, there was people who I was obsessed with and that gave me so much inspiration to like do everything that I've ever done. And I always thought to myself, like, I want to be like that. I want to be inspirational to people. To me, it gives me the freedom to do kind of whatever I want because I'm like, as long as that's the first thing above anything else, that's all I care about. When you first start out, it's like, oh, well, nobody's interested in my life. Like, what? But I kind of think the same thing about me, too. I'm like, mm, nobody cares. But people tell me that they do. So, like, I guess. So when you think about value, think about the people that you follow. And what think about why you follow, like, some of your favorite people. And that'll kind of help you a little bit to be like, hmm, well, this is what I want to do. And it's going to be different for everybody because I know, like, a lot of people watching I know you guys aren't all interested in the same exact things that I am I know you guys like do a lot of different things but I feel like it's kind of all in the same thing as like being a creative person um, like it all kind of goes together in a way I want to talk about aesthetics and I don't even mean this in the way uh, it sounds cringe it sounds cringe I hate this I hate ew I hate that I just said that ew 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 but the reason why I want to talk about it, I actually want to say that it doesn't mean that much. Like, it really, really doesn't. And that can, if you're an overthinker, that's going to hold you back. I already know. Like, you don't even have to tell me. You're probably like, oh, but I don't have an aesthetic, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Girl, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Because one, you probably do, but you don't even think you do. Because I, I don't think I do. I don't think I do. I'm just being myself. And people are like, oh, but you're aesthetic or you're whatever, whatever. And I'm like, whoa, I didn't even mean to like do that. So honestly, just express yourself how you feel on the inside and it something will come together. Like, I promise. But it doesn't mean everything. Don't feel held back by feeling like you have to have aesthetic this, aesthetic that. Just be yourself, just express yourself and do it in a way that makes you happy. If you feel like you're boring, like wearing like boring clothes or you have a boring whatever, then make it feel good. Make yourself like known in the space. If you were to look at the space and be like, that's me, I did that. So like for me, girl, 
if you're watching the video podcast, literally my bed is behind me. I put Christmas lights there and that's good enough for me. That makes me happy. But uh, look, I don't have a crazy setup. I don't, nothing I have is insane. Like guys, I thrift everything. I've had everything I've had for like 10 years. Don't think that you have to go out and like buy a whole new life or be a different person. You can be yourself and it is enough. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about consistency. Consistency means different things across different platforms. For me, my thing that I always hold myself to is posting every day on my story, at least posting one TikTok a day, even though sometimes I slack. Um, but yeah, just posting once a day. Nothing crazy. Whenever you're first starting to grow though, I honestly would rec recommend posting three times a day. That's what I did to grow. Um, but now I'm posting like once a day. I would love to post more. Right now I don't have energy. Sorry. Uh, I wish I had more energy. I need to step it up though. Like honestly, I need to step it up. I've been thinking this forever. I need to step it up. But yeah, consistent consistency. I don't really have much else to say besides like show up every day and it's gonna get easier whenever you're doing it more. So like for me showing up every day is kind of like on my Instagram story because it's the easiest thing and honestly the quickest way I feel like I connect with people because like you know, if you have your gang, you always swipe up on stories and like reply to like, that's just a way to connect with people and stay close to like your friends online. Um, but that kind of brings me to another thing is be social, like actually talk to like the people that you're following, comment on things. Don't feel embarrassed. Like girl, it's a free world. Don't feel embarrassed about that. Nobody's thinking that you're weird. Actually, people online appreciate you commenting and appreciate you DMing, so don't overthink it. But yeah, socialize in your community, girl. Okay, so that was all kind of the steps of what you should do to get ready, get you on your journey, but now you're actually starting. Now you're making your videos, now you're posting your content. You might be wondering, like, what kind of videos should I make? It doesn't matter. You already kind of know, probably. You already have probably an idea of what you want to post. But the biggest thing I would recommend is that you show yourself, show your face, show your personality, show who you are because, okay, I think about the people that I follow. I am obsessed with them because they show their lives. And to me, I don't know why, but that's so entertaining. <laughs> like it's better than reality TV. It's better than any Netflix show. Like I love seeing people's lives. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just nosy, but I love when people spill the tea. I love like hearing whenever, oh, whenever the girlies have like 45 minute long vlogs on YouTube, I'm like, yes, honey, this episode, like this show is so good. Thank you for uploading. Thank you for sharing your life. So my advice would honestly be to share your life and you can have boundaries. I have boundaries. I don't share everything that happens to me, but I feel like it's enough to, I don't know, get people interested. And I honestly want to share more. I don't really show like my everyday life as much as I want to. And I really, really want to on YouTube, especially <clears throat> with like vlogs and stuff. I feel like no matter what industry you're in, showing who you are means so much to your platform and I feel like it helps people grow so much. If you just think about the people on YouTube or um, TikTok for reference and you think of like those huge accounts, like they share a lot. They show their lives, they show their house. You don't have to do any of that, but I mean like pick your boundaries of what you wanna share, but at least share something because that honestly makes it interesting. There's the argument about picking a niche, like do I have to pick a niche? This is my advice and this is advice that you're never ever ever gonna hear from anybody else. But this is my personal advice, no. No, you don't need to pick a niche. I'm gonna say no. Yes, you can grow when you are only doing one type of video. Yes, you can. And you probably will grow super fast. But my honest advice is to do the things that you want to do online, post what you want to post, because guess what? 
after so long of being consistent, something's going to happen. Like, something's going to pick up. So, if you're already doing what you want to do, and your videos are picking up, or your TikToks are picking up, girl, you hit the jackpot. You hit the jackpot because you're doing something that makes you happy. Now, if you think about you putting yourself in a box of like, okay, well, I can only make these type of videos. So like, for example, um, so like for me, hair. If I only did like hair videos and I never posted about anything else, mm, I'm too much of a creative person to feel like I'd be happy with that. And you might, if you do feel like you could be happy with just doing one thing on social media for the rest of the time, then do that. But for me, I am like, no, ain't no way. Ain't no way that's happening. I want to do everything that I want to do and I am not going to have any limit to feel like, oh my gosh, but I can't make videos about this or whatever, whatever. No, not happening here. And I would suggest that you don't start like that either because like I said something will pick up and just make sure you're doing what you want to do already or at least you're in a space that you will have longe longevity. <laughs> okay I feel like I'm saying way too much like this is super <gasps> I wasn't even recording on here. Okay well I'm gonna have to use the video <laughs> audio. <laughs> oh gosh I wasn't recording on my mic. Switch, Switch over, over now. Now, now it's going to my mic. mic. Do strategies work? Hashtags, trends, posting three times a day. Posting three times a day, yes, it works. Trends, yes and no, yes and no. Let me come back to you on that. What was the other thing? Hashtags. Hashtags, yes, use them. They're going to help you to like basically get your target audience and use hashtags that you yourself would be looking for or that you want the people who are going to see your videos, you want them to be looking that up. Trends. Why you should be doing trends, why you shouldn't be doing trends. So this is an unpopular opinion about trends. I think trends are annoying. Like, I honestly think after the third time I've seen it, I'm super annoyed unless it's something that's like really funny or super entertaining or done a little bit differently. But other than that, if you are just making the same video as everybody else, it's not going to hit. Like, especially if a bunch of people have already done it, it's just not going to hit unless you make it different, like I said, or make it your own, make it funny, make it entertaining. It's just not going to hit. And I wouldn't rely on doing trends all the time just because, like I said, like, it's just it's boring. It's not cool. It's not interesting. It's not giving me anything new. So I would say just be careful with trends. Don't overdo them. I think if you're, if you feel like led to like get in on a trend because you're like, oh, I, I identify like with this or whatever, then yes, I, I think so. Or if it goes with like your industry or you can figure out a way to like make it go with your industry, then I'd say yes. But honestly, you should try to do as much original content as possible. And maybe I'm like selfishly saying this because I really enjoy when people do different things. Like there's nothing I can't stand more than like when I'm watching a few different YouTube videos or a few different videos and it feels like I'm in the twilight zone or I'm like in a simulation, which I am of like just the same things going on i don't like that so i really don't think you should do that i think you should always be yourself online seriously i feel like that's gonna go so far way further than if you were trying to be somebody else or trying to do what everybody else is doing just because it's like we have seen that and nothing nothing else is cool about that i feel like i don't know this is like the last tip with the whole creation part but the last thing is to have fun have fun don't like i want you to be gentle with yourself but at the same time like yes i do want you to have the drive to do it but also be gentle with yourself in the way of like don't make this not fun because it is fun don't make this like a thing that gives you anxiety and if it does, then maybe it's not the right thing for you. But just don't, like, 
make yourself miserable over something that's supposed to be fun and I swear when you're having fun for one everything hits different and then two you're gonna see a lot more success when you're doing things for fun and just being yourself promise I promise I promise I promise have fun be yourself never change (laughs) unless you should okay now finally we're getting into making money so this is now now you started your account now you're making your videos and now you're getting recognition you're getting followers and maybe you're getting brand deals this is something new for me i literally just started this part of my life in september so like i'm so new to this but brand deals they're gonna happen once you get popping and you will get popping i believe in you i believe in you i believe in you i believe in you say it i believe in myself say it for you to even get brand deals i'm gonna need you to put your email in your bio whether it's instagram tiktok youtube anything put your email in every single description that you need to all the bios everything because that's how the brands are going to find you all the tips that i've given is to grow your platform right so now that your platform is grown the deals are coming honey the deals are coming I want you to write out a list of your favorite brands, just the brands that you use every day, all of your dream brands that you dream about owning, write it all down, write everything down, and you're going to get them. I believe you're going to get them because that's what I did, and I am checking some off the list. It's like crazy to even say that. But making money from doing brand deals, it's a dream come true. And it's, I feel um, kind of weird talking about it, like in a way, only because it's so new to me at the same time. But I feel like I should really tell you guys because I know it will inspire you. Like, this is something that I would always look to people online about, like making money, like how they did that. Because my biggest thing was like, if I can pay my bills with this, life is good. I don't need anything else. Life is good. And that's been happening to me. It's so crazy. And guys, I didn't go out and buy a Lamborghini or anything. I still have my little beater car, (laughs) but like I'm paying my bills and that means so much to me. So now that you have your email in your bio and you're starting to get emails, you need to put your professionalism pants on let's be professional guys put them on and respond to your emails respond fast too you need to respond fast you need to look up how to i literally look up everything look up how to write an email if you don't know how to write one and you'll figure it out this is something i'm also figuring out like along the way it's crazy negotiating for yourself oh my gosh i I've been in business. I've been in business for a few years. So I kind of know like a little bit about negotiating for yourself, especially right now with being a creator. I just know that there's so many creators getting taken advantage of. I don't like it because a lot of people are doing stuff for free or for like $50. And I just want you to know that you can get more. I didn't believe it was crazy. Okay, so let me tell you a little story. The first ever brand deal I got, I didn't even know what to say because they asked for my rate. I didn't even know what to say. So I think I said like (laughs) $1,000. And (laughs) I don't know how I had the confidence to be like, yeah, 1000 But I was just like, I'm going to just do it. I'm just going to say 1000 Like, what the the worst that could happen is that they talk me down and tell me a lower number and like in reality i was like i'll literally take 100 bucks i'll take 150 but oh shoot maybe i shouldn't say that hopefully only the girls are listening but yeah i don't like the worst thing that can happen is that they talk you down and honestly money is money girl make that money if it's think about this if you're doing a video, a 30 second video, really? So yeah, I said a thousand and they did shoot me down, like not all the way down, 
but like just a little bit and I was like that's fine honey like that'll pay my bills I'll take it you know and so that was my first time like ever even doing a deal and it was so crazy that it was kind of a big brand I love them by the way but really just know that your content is worth it and I actually want to say even if you don't have a lot of followers or followers in general you still are worth it because I see okay so I don't know if you guys are on like the creator side of TikTok but I always see like the UGC videos blah 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 if you don't know what that is, look it up because I kind of don't feel like explaining it, <laughs> but it's basically like you just make videos for brands and you don't post them. It has nothing to do with your profile, who you are. And I see those girlies making minimum 100 to 150 per video. So if you do have a platform, you are worth it. Even if you don't, your work, your, you making something is worth something. A rate is something you're going to have to figure out for yourself. And it's something I am still figuring out, like, especially with YouTube. I just got asked my YouTube rate and I'm like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. But I made myself a media kit, which I would definitely recommend doing. I wouldn't recommend putting your prices or anything, but I would recommend just like saying um, how many followers you have, showing a few like examples of your content um, and what your community looks like so if it's made up of like mostly women um mostly age range 18 to 25 all that kind of stuff um and that will really really help with getting brand deals because when they're already in your dms or in your emails like they already want you right but they're gonna need to know that type of info to know like how much they want to pay you or what they even want to collaborate on so i would really recommend doing that I also want to mention that brand deals isn't the only way you can make money. If you are a talented artist or say you have anything to offer, you might have to really think about that. But like for me, I make crochet items. I make a lot of different art items. I made these little rings. I make things and I sell them online too. And that's another way to make money whenever you're on social media because you're really putting yourself out there like you're putting your art out there and people are like more inclined to support you seeing it rather than like it just being in the corner of your room and not seeing the light of day so post your art post your talents post like all of the things that you can create and I honestly wish you luck I know that it's a lot to think about and I hope that this helped even just a little bit if this did help let me know and if you want any more tips I feel like there's more things I could probably say just let me know and I can do like a whole Q&A episode which that would be super cool and I just want to thank the people again who left feedback on the last episode you're so sweet and if you have any feedback for this episode let me know um, I'll see you guys in the next episode, which I'm going to be posting every Sunday. And I, after I had to get this episode out of the way, but afterwards I am going to be doing random bonus episodes throughout the week because I got like three people telling me that they want more episodes. So I was like, okay, that's enough. That's all I need to know. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Make sure to check me out on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye.